This is Yvonne Sims. In this episode of Strong and Courageous, I'll be featuring Darlene Thorne, a determined, diligent, and daring woman designed to fulfill God's destiny. Now hear from Darlene what is her destiny and purpose. My name is Darlene Thorne, and I am a determined, diligent, and daring woman designed to fulfill God's destiny. Growing up as a pastor's daughter, you're put in the limelight because your father is the pastor, and he's a great man of God. That was my father, but it wasn't me. I was living in the shadows of that. When I went to school, it wasn't like that at all. At school, I was the meekest, the scariest young lady at school. I got teased most of the time growing up. So I really didn't have the confidence in who I was. And so it was for many years that I would hide behind colors. I wouldn't wear bright colors because I didn't want anybody to really see me. For people that don't know who I am or what I look like, I am a dark chocolate complected woman, and I figured if I wore colors like blue and forest green and black and brown, I would melt into those colors and no one would see me. I wanted so desperately to be invisible, but I know that God had a plan for my life. I believe I was about 15 years old, and my parents after 23 years of marriage, severed ties, and they divorced. And because I felt closer to my dad than I did my mom, I blamed my mother for our, the par- my parents' breakup. So I spent a couple of years just being really rude and despondent. I just became very promiscuous because I was looking for love. I couldn't I didn't get along with my mom for a few years, and I just brought her a lot of torment. I was about 18 years old, and I went to a basic youth conflicts conference. And at that conference, I learned about who I was. I learned about who God created me to be. I learned that I was more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And that I was more than my parents, and I was more than my parents' breakup. I learned that even though they made a decision to sever ties and to divorce, that was not supposed to be my lot in life, and that I would forever, remember I talked about living in the shadows of my parents, I'm not to live in their shadows, but I'm supposed to live as a divinely created woman of God. And so while I was at that conference, I gave my heart completely to God and I allowed him to be Lord of my life. And that's where the determination came in. The determination to live a life that's pleasing to God, being determined to have a marriage that, will be pleasing to God, being determined to live a Christian and godly life before those I come in contact with, that was my determination. And that's what changed the course of my history because I was determined not to live my life through my mother and my mm-hmm. father, but to live my life as a godly woman who serves him with all of her heart. I want to share with you the fact that, yes, I've been married to my wonderful husband 30 years. My husband and I were married almost 10 years before we had our first child. My husband and I were married seven years. We're both believers. We love God with all of our hearts, but we really didn't know how to love each other, not when it really counted. We really didn't communicate as effectively as we should have. We talked at each other and really not to each other. And during those years, we wanted to be understood before we wanted to understand. And so communication was really tough. 
and we couldn't quite get it together. And during that time, because of how I was raised, all I could think about, and this I know was the enemy. I know it was Satan who brought those thoughts back. He began to remind me of my parents. He reminded me they didn't make it. Why do you think you're going to make it? I was starting to feel like, oh, my goodness, am I falling into the same trap? Am I falling into the same pitfall? Am I, is it going to be the same? Am I not going to last even 23 years? And I began to, un, to look and say, well, what am I doing? What role am I playing in this? And I found myself falling deeper into isolation from my husband. He was in graduate school and he was doing his studies, and while he's doing his studies, I'm just, I'm, I'm working, just trying to figure out what it is I can do to make our marriage better. And I made terrible choices, terrible errors in just not communicating with him, not expressing to him what I should be, the, the needs that I have. And then on top of that, not listening to God and not listening to my husband and what needs he had. And so we were in a really tough place. We, when he graduated from business school, we were excited and elated and he got his job and we moved out to Chicago and it looked like things were going to be great. They were going to be fine and dandy. But I just recognized that we weren't communicating like we should. We argued a lot. And then we'd go to church on Sunday and I'd raise my hands and I'd be so excited. But then in the pit of my soul, I knew that there was just an emptiness. I made some poor choices. There was a time that my husband and I were separated from each other. I spent some time in New Jersey with my mom and with my sister's because we had to figure out what we were going to do with our marriage. And while we were separated, there was a close friend of ours who passed away in Chicago, and his wife asked for me to read the obituary. And when I got the invitation, I knew that it was at that point I needed to go back, and I needed to go back home, and I needed to make things right with my husband. And when I got back and I saw his face and he saw mine, we realized that we were bigger than our problem, that what we needed to do was to come to God together and to allow the Lord to mend our broken hearts because we were both broken people. And God mended our broken hearts. There is absolutely nothing wrong with going to counseling because we need to have Christian and godly counselors who can speak into our lives and show us the areas that we cannot see. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors there is safety. And when we cannot do things on our own, we need to be big enough to recognize that we need help. And that is why God created those Christian counselors That is why God created those elders who could shepherd us and who could speak into our lives and encourage us and then on top of that hold us accountable for what we say we're going to do. And from that point on, the Lord has graciously and wonderfully molded us and shaped us and created in us new hearts that now when I see him, It puts a smile on my face. When I see him, there is such joy and such love, and I know that he feels the same for me. Even though you make mistakes, even though you make poor choice, God is greater than all of that. And that's where the diligence comes in because it's not easy. It's hard work. It's every day you make a decision that you're going to follow hard after God, It's every day you make a decision that you are going to do what's necessary to make sure you're listening to your spouse, to make sure that you're hearing his heart, to make sure that you are meeting his needs so that he doesn't lack in anything. And you leave the rest up to God. I am daring to 
to stand on God's word. I am daring to trust God's word beyond what I can see. So when people see me, and they see me holding my husband's hand, and they see me rubbing his neck, and they see me putting my hand on his shoulder and standing close to him, it's because I love this man. And see, people don't know where I've been. They see where I am today. They think it's easy. Some people may be haters and don't like what they see, but they don't know your story. And I'm so grateful to God that he's brought us through so that on October 5th, we can look at each other's eyes and say, 30 years and still going strong. Father, I thank you because, first of all, you love us. And I thank you that you love us in spite of ourselves. I thank you because you knew before time began that this day would be. And because you love marriage first, it's the first thing you instituted in the Bible. Even before the church, you instituted marriage, bringing Adam and Eve together. That was so important to you. And I pray today for every married couple, for every engaged couple, for every couple that is just walking together trying to decide whether that is for them. I pray for even those singles who are looking to get married. I pray for each and every category. I ask you in Jesus' name to reveal to each and every one of them their part. Reveal to them that it's going to take work. It's going to take tenacity. It's going to take stick to And it's going to most importantly take a relationship with you that will change the course of their history, the course of their destiny. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak to their hearts. Holy Spirit, draw them closer to you. May they experience you like they've never experienced you before. May they have a relationship with you that is so close that it will make their spouse, it will make their boyfriend, it will make them jealous for what they have with you. It would make them jealous for wanting to have the same intimacy. I ask you in Jesus' name to knit their hearts together as one. I pray that your will would be done in their lives. I pray that each and every person would fulfill the destiny that they have been created to fulfill, knowing that each one of us has a specific purpose for which we were created. You didn't create us by accident. You didn't create us and then decide what you wanted to do with us. You knew what that need was, and then you created us to fulfill that need. You knew what that void was, and then you created us to fill that void. I ask you to show us specifically what Mm -hmm. we're supposed to do in this season of our life so that we can be one that bring glory to you and that we reach those people that you've called us to. May we be light. May we be salt in those areas that need a change, in those areas that need to be equipped, that need to be built up. Show us, Lord God. May we not be weary in well-doing but we know we will reap if we don't faint. And, Father, you told us in your word that you would renew our strength, that we would mount up with wings as eagles, that we would run and not be weary, we would walk and not faint, and it is incumbent upon us to wait on you. May we seek you with all of our hearts. May we seek you diligently. May we be determined to seek you, and may we be daring to stand up and be bold so we can fulfill the destiny that you've created us. We thank you, Father, for every person that's going to listen and receive this prayer. We thank you, Father, that you are going to work in them both to will and to do 
of your good pleasure. We thank you, Lord, because you are our sovereign God, our sovereign King. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to this episode of Strong and Courageous. I'm your host, Yvonne Sims. To hear more stories of strength and courage, visit my website at YvonneSims.com or my Facebook page at Yvonne Sims. Until next time, beloved, be strong and courageous.